Hey friends, welcome home. I hope you're blessed and doing well because I'm doing great. Welcome back to the garden. Today I am going to be doing a few chores as always on the homestead. And today I will be making some seed balls for my garden beds. And what I'm going to do is place them in certain areas where I want them to germinate. And I'm gonna let nature take its course and determine when they will do just that. I will also be sowing additional seeds so that I can have kind of like a succession sowing going on. And I would like to show you how I'm going to do that today. So here I have my sand um, back here that I'm going to amend my soil with to make the seed balls. So along with the sand, I'm also going to amend my clay soil with potting mix. So here I just have a standard potting mix that I'm going to add water to because I want this to be really wet so that when I add it to my clay, everything will bond together. Collard greens have been a joy in the garden. They add a extra boost of nutrition for the chickens when they come out to forage because they loved they love eating them. Um, these particular collards are going to seed and I'm going to let them do just that. But today I am going to be sowing more collards and kale and more of my greens as well. So seed balls are really easy to make, um, especially when you have clay soil. So here I have mine that I'm amending with potting mix and sand and I'm using those things because seeds have a really tough time pushing through clay soil. So that's what the challenge of gardening in clay soil is, is that you have to make sure your soil is well amended and nice and tilled and fluffy so that your seeds can push through. So I love collecting different varieties of seeds and here in my seed container I have a large variety of cucumbers to choose from so that's what I'll be sowing in my seed balls today. I have different heirloom varieties, open pollinated varieties, and varieties that I just want to try and give a grow. And I would definitely encourage you to do so as well. There's so many different cucumber varieties to choose from, and it's always good to try different things so that you can see what will work in your particular garden and in your climate. So my sweet friend Carolina Gardner gave me these pickling cucumbers and the homemade pickle is one of our favorites. So I will be sowing this one in this particular area. And all you do is once you make your seed balls, you can actually sow seeds directly on top of the seed ball if it needs light to germinate by rolling the seed ball in the seeds. But cucumbers don't need light to germinate so you can actually just put a small divot in the seed ball in the clay and just drop seeds in and I'm placing about two to three seeds per seed ball. I've done a calculation of how many cucumber plants I will need for my family. So according to a little bit of research if you're wanting to grow your cucumber plants it's two cucumber plants per person if you're eating them fresh and it's three to five cucumbers per person if you're wanting to can them. So because of that, I'm just gonna go ahead and sow about five to six cucumbers per person because we'll be eating them fresh and we'll be canning them. Seed balls are fun to make and also fun to make with your children. So you may wanna get your hands dirty and make some, it's really fun. However, this acts as a really good propagation station and seed starting station for you when you're not quite ready to put them in the ground. So what will happen is nature will take its course and these seeds will germinate when they're ready. They'll get rained on and you'll position them where you want them to germinate or you can just move them when they germinate and place them where you want them to go. The chickens love the red clay as they dust bathe in the clay soil. They love it. Thank you. 
We have some beautiful eggs to harvest today and I am so glad that the chickens have started laying regularly and it's such a joy. What? <laughs> this chicken, hold on a minute. Uh oh, she mad. She mad. I got her eggs. My son wants to throw some turkey burgers on the grill, so I am going to remove the charcoal ashes from the grill and I will use this actually in the garden. Wood ash and charcoal ash is a really good amendment to add to your garden beds and we can talk about that in another video. But if you do have wood ashes and charcoal ashes, don't just toss them out. They can definitely be used Whew, in your I garden. I got hot you guys, so I had to take off, get a little cooler. <laughs> but it's time for me to take out my trees and bring the trees up. I have my trees overwintering in the garage. My trees are overwintering in the garage and I'm going to go ahead and take them out today because the peach tree that's on the deck has already started blooming. All right, so I have a lot of trees um, and I've been taking them. I'm going to go ahead and take them out. This is the Arkansas. This is the Arkansas black. This one right here. Um, I just got this one last season and it had apples all over it. So this one is ready to, ready to go. So we had to have our property surveyed so that we can see what we needed to put the apples in the ground or the, well, we had the property surveyed so that we can see where we could finally plant our fruit trees in the ground. So um, all of these little posts and stakes that are going all the way down, um, our property line and that way we can now I can see where I can plant all of my fruit trees I'm really really excited about that I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of them out okay so here are the signs that let you know it's time to plant and your fruit trees start blooming even though these have been overwintered in my garage so they just know when it's time I don't think this climate change has anything to do with this. This is just timing. They know it's time to wake up. So, all of these plants have been overwintered and I still have a few more to go. This is, um, which one is this? Did I put a tag on this one? Oh, these are both my citrus. Okay, so this one is the citrus. Which one is it? Lord. I don't know, y'all. Let me see. Oh, this is the key lime. Okay, so if that's the key lime, then this one is the Satsuma orange. That's what that is. And this is, um, this one is waking up. It's starting to bud up. I had it overwintered. I just got this clematis last season. I got that on clearance. And then this is, oh no, I broke a little branch. But um, this one, ooh, yay, plum, Japanese plum. This one is a sweet goodness, Alberta peach. Um, that's another clematis. This is a, um, oh my God, this is, I just got this one last season too. Um, and I just, a double scoop bubble gum cone flower. This is gonna be really pretty. This is my tea plant. This is some um, lavender that I have to plant. I haven't had a chance to plant that. This is another apple tree right here. I don't know which one it is. Oh Lord, you guys, I don't know. And I don't know which one this one is. The tag came off, look at that. This is a banana tree that's been overwintered and I just got this one my last season on clearance too this is another um, this was on clearance so it wasn't seven seven dollars this is a geranium I overwintered I think it has some weeds in there banana tree right here oh gosh so so far so good um, I do have some more to get out 
and I'm gonna go ahead and get them settled in on the back deck and get them prepared for planting very soon. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and sow some more seeds. This evening, I'm gonna be sowing my peppers, um, collards, kale, beets. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sow some carrots in that raised bed back there. Um, and I hadn't had a chance to get celery started either, so I would definitely be doing that. And I'm really, really excited about that. So you guys, I hope that you all have had an amazing day. I hope that um, I've been some garden inspiration for you today. Everybody has a lot of work to do. My neighbors over there are to do making repairs on their home and we're trying to do a lot for ours as well. This is a rose bush that I need to cut back and the other ones on the side of the house need to be cut back as well. <laughs> A lot of work always a lot of work to do in the garden but at any rate I'm really happy about it it really feels like spring so in my book spring has definitely sprung I'm gonna treat it as such because of the climate and um, protect things that need to be protected when I see on the news that you know we're gonna have some really dropping temps or something like that I'm just gonna protect them and um, get everything Closed up. I'm gonna go ahead and take that lamp out of the coop because they don't need it. I don't think we're gonna be getting any temperatures that are gonna be so cold that they can't handle it. Everybody's in. All the everybody's in. Yeah. Everybody's in. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all on the next one been so much going on on the homestead and actually in life. I've had so many loved ones and friends that have lost their loved ones in the past couple of weeks and um, unfortunately you guys that has been the delay for my videos coming out because I have been going to going to different things in support of um, their families and friends and um, giving them our condolences. So it's been really tough. Um, we had a lot of losses from um, friends and family that were um, well friends of ours from our from my school that I used to work for um, and th this past week um, it's just been so so terrible but through it all though um, I'm able to get some type of refuge here in the garden and I hope that if you're dealing with those same things as well that you find peace and happiness in your heart as well i wish you all many blessings and sending all my love and for anyone that is going through a troubled time during this time my condolences see you all on the next one